Hello everybody. Um, so we are going to start talking about the um, selection of the thermodynamic model. Um, and uh, for, for the selection of the dynamic model, we said it, it depends on the components that we are using and on the operating conditions. And this is something that we, um, we uh, mentioned before. Um, when we talked about this chart, that you check if it's polar or non-polar, then you go for the polar. If it's polar, then you go for ele for electrolytes or non-electrolytes, and then you check the pressure. So this is this is uh, something that we uh, we checked before. And um, uh, yes, and and then uh, we need to um, see how we can do this here in Aspen Plus, and how can Aspen Plus help us um, achieve this um, this. Uh, uh, step um, easily and efficiently um, it's, it's not going to be um, like the case that you have this chart all the time so you need to have something in Aspen plus that can help you do this um, and and th we already talked about the component section and now we're going to talk about the met method section and you see this is the red part of the um, um, of, of the uh, this uh, navigation part and this this uh, um, tells us that there's something missing in 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 this section which is the the thermodynamic model um, and if you if you open this um, this tab, you'd see that it it tells you that this is the property method and options, and nothing is chosen here because I haven't chosen anything yet. Um, there are some uh, thing about the method filter, um, and here you'd see that these these are some categories of methods. There are some methods that are common methods, um, and and it says commonly used property methods, and there are some for chemical methods. Uh, and by chemical method, he means the polar uh, components uh, that uh, that form hydrogen bonds and and um, have high polarity. Um, there are something for coal, something for electrolytes, and some for uh, environmental applications, some for hydro hydrofluoric acid applications, and like there are a big number of of um, of methods here or or categories here. Um, but here comes the the question: How can I pick the uh, proper thermodynamic model from uh, or, or using the um, Aspen Plus um, and you'd see that there is something here that's called method assistant um, uh, before I go to method assistant I need to go to the components there are ethanol methanol water which are all uh, polar components and methane which is a gas uh, non-condensable gas um, and uh, Let's let's open the method assistant and see how can it help us. What what method assistant is doing? It's gonna do exactly what we um, did here. Just a chart that uh, gives you some questions or options, and based on the answer of each question, you would go to the right direction. And this is exactly what we are gonna do here. Uh, he is gonna ask us some questions, and this is uh, what it says. Welcome to thermodynamic pro property method assistant. The purpose of assistant to help you select the most appropriate property model for uh, use with Aspen Plus. And we'll ask you a number of questions, which is use uh, which it uses to suggest one or more property method. So it's gonna. Uh, based on your answers, that's gonna tell you which thermodynamic model to pick. So the first is, uh, is it a, a component type or a process type? So there are some processes that have um, like um, uh, common thermodynamic models to be used, like refrigeration cycles, like uh, um, liquefied natural gas processes. So these processes are are kind of uh, generic processes that have uh, the the uh, the proper thermodynamic models for them. Uh, in our case, I don't have a process, so I'm going to select the component. Tablet. Let's take a look at the process. So it's going to tell you it's a chemical process. It's an electrolyte process, gas processing, oil and gas, petrochemical, polymer, whatever. Let's say I, I check uh, our uh, chemicals and it's going to tell you because it's a chemical. Again, let's let's go here for chemical, which are the polar components. You see that most of them are the um, activity coefficient models, uh, not, not the uh, uh, the cubic equation of state. <clears throat> So um, so here it tells you you would go for an RTL, Wilson, Uniquack, or Unifac, or whatever. <coughs> and it tells you that some some stuff that ha have to be taken into consideration while choosing the equation of a state. Um, before before it tells you that if you're operating at high pressure, uh, you, you have to use an equation of a state. So it didn't ask you the question of the pressure. Again here, if you have high pressure, it's going to give you high uh, equation of a state as well. 
So it's 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 like totally agreeing with with this chart. Um, if it's low pressure, you would go for. Um, I'm sorry. Um, low pressure, it's going to go for Wilson uh, in RTL Uniquack, which are the activity coefficient models. But in case if you have azeotropic separation, if you have carboxylic acids, hydrogen fluoride, let's say I have I have carboxylic acids, it's going to tell you that you have to use activity coefficient model with Hayden O'Connell model for vapor phase activation. Um, and 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 this is a point to to consider um, because if if you're using for instance an RTL model, then this model is gonna be applied for the all the phases, the liquid and the vapor phase. Um, and in in case of uh, of having carboxylic acids, this is not gonna be pro uh, the proper um, uh, model to use. So you have to have a model uh, that that works for the the vapor phase. And this is what it says: organic acids, tetraacetic acids, form dimers in the vapor phase, and require a special model. And that's why you cannot use the NRTL for the vapor phase. Um, this is this is really helpful actually to to read the the, uh, the instructions um, in case i go for component type i have chemical hydrocarbon special refrigerants um, i don't have refrigerants here i don't have um, any of these it says the special are water amines sour water carboxylic acids or hydrogen fluoride electrolytes i don't have any of these hydrocarbon i don't have hydro hydrocarbons will go for, will be for the uh, the uh, um, comp compounds containing carbon and hydrogen only um, it's like ethanes uh, I mean alkanes alkenes alkynes and stuff like that um, but I have a chemical system that includes the um, uh, the the hydrogen bonding that are polar components and I'm, uh, am I applying at high pressure um, I'm, let's say I, I'm not if, if I apply uh, high pressure is gonna give me the um, the uh, cubic equation to say the the SR um, PRWS and again this is what what we see here polar at high pressure we will work at this region and if um, and it give, gives us some uh, some topics to be uh, helpful um, you can read more about the equation of state with advanced um, mixing rules you can read about any of these um, equations of state in more details uh, but if I'm not applying or working at high pressure, I would go for an RTL, Wilson, in or in effect, which are the activity coefficient model. So it's it's in in a very good agreement with the chart. So I can uh, work without using the chart by uh, by going here. But it was important for us to see this chart to have an understanding of the uh, uh, the path of choice of the thermodynamic models, and instead of being only dependent on the um, the method assistant. Um, again, you have this thing, if you have carboxylic acids, you'd have uh, to work with one of these, the HOC, which is exactly what we, we found before. Um, if you have Henry's uh, component, and this is this is the, the point in our case, uh, if, if you remember, we had methane with the component. So if you have uh, non-condensable components such, uh, such as hydrogen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, oxygen, um, and methane, of course, um, and you have you must declare them as Henry's component in the component Henry component form. Um, so this is something we will do now. But first we need, we, we we will go for uh, one of these. Um, and then before we we go to the Henry component, there is a, a question that needs to be answered. Um, are we expecting to get the same results from an RTL Wilson Unifac and Unifac uh, for the same system, or are there going to be differences? Of course, there are going to be differences. There are going to be big differences, but there will be some differences um, in the results. Um, and to figure out which one is the most appropriate model, which are going to give you the most accurate results, you have to um, do more work on reading and understanding uh, which one of them is the proper one. Um, you can um, either read papers or find people who did uh, similar work before for similar systems or to read more about the thermodynamic models and uh, you would find some good information here in the uh, Aspen Plus help about the thermodynamic models and um, the, which, which one and, and it's going to give you some guidance about the uh, the proper model, the most proper model to use for your case. Anyway, so now let's go back for the Henry's component. Um, by the way, the method assistant is not going to do anything here. It's going to give you the suggestions. So you have to go or do this by yourself. So I'm going to go for an RTL. This, this has all the models. 
um, that are here in 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 S one plus. But here you see um, only the category. So here you'd find a small list or short list, and these are only the 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 models that go under the common uh, filter. Um, some of it, it's gonna be very common to find models that you haven't heard about before, and and this is this is um, this is totally natural. Don't don't feel bad about it. Uh, you're gonna you're not gonna use any or, or do any calculations by yourself. So you just need to pick the proper model, and that's all what you need to do. So I pick the NRTL, and here I have the Henry component, which is methane. Um, I I need to add it, so I'm gonna uh, call it new. I'm gonna call it HC1. Um, and I I haven't I haven't chosen methane yet, so I, I I need to tell him that this includes methane. And to find this, you would find that uh, there is uh, uh, the parameters here. Um, uh, oh oh no, I'm I'm sorry, it's in the components here. I'm sorry. Uh, you would see that the Henry components <coughs> that we just added here, and it's gonna, it's gonna ask you which one of them is the Henry component. So I'm gonna say methane. Um, it's gonna tell you that it's gonna change the parameters uh, that uh, that it generates, and and the, the, to understand this this message, um, the uh, the the uh, thermodynamic model automatically calculates the binary interaction parameters to be able to do the calculations, um, and he just tells you that this is gonna change the parameters that were calculated, and I'm I'm totally fine with this, um, as long as it's gonna it's gonna give the right parameters. Um, so if I'm gonna go here, I find that it's it's done. Henry is is now satisfied, and I need just to go to the next step, but uh, which is the finding how to to do some calculations. Um, but here it says the required input is still incomplete, and to understand why, uh, you don't need to do anything more than just going here. Um, and to just uh, there's something missing here, and these are the binary interaction parameters. You might think that you need to calculate them by yourself, but this is you don't have to do anything. Uh, I don't I don't understand till now why we need to do this, but what you need to do is just to uh, click here, and it's gonna automatically generate the parameters. And click here, it's gonna automatically generate the parameters, and now the required input is complete. Why doesn't it do it by by itself? I uh, and why do I have to click here to for them to do the calculations? I don't know, but just do it. it it's it's just as simple as clicking on uh, on this tab, and it's gonna be done. Um, so now I I'm I'm done with the uh, definition of the components and the thermodynamic model, and I'm ready now to <clears throat> um, do some analysis and get some information about my system before going to the simulation environment. There are a lot of things that we can go do here in the properties environment, which are very very useful and. Um, helpful. So this is uh, going to be the topic of the next video. Inshallah. So I'll see you then.